Hi, welcome to the talk. Um, this talk is the Hidden Game Design Mechanic talk. Uh, this is kind of like a, a series of mini talks that are follow-ons to the Make Your Own Mobile Game in 60 Minutes talk that I put up on YouTube. And the point of these Hidden Game Design Mechanic talks is to give you kind of these hidden game design mechanics that can, that can help make your game more successful so that you stand out from the crowd and you develop something that can um, you know, get to the top of the charts. And so uh, today's talk, uh, the hidden game design mechanic we'll discuss is the theme mechanic. And the theme mechanic is pretty much just choosing the right theme for your game. You can have the same gameplay, but if you choose a theme, depending on the theme you choose, will kind of determine whether that game is 10 or 100 times as successful or more successful. So, um, so for example, you know, the games, uh, let's, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so basically uh, the point of the theme mechanic is to point out that you can have the same gameplay, the same game system, but applying a different theme can produce 10 times more success. And we'll discuss that, but for example, there's Dragon Veil, which is kind of a dragon type sim. It you know, takes that farm theme and, you know, and that farm sim type thing where it's an appointment mechanic and it applies cute dragons. So you're kind of running your own little dragon park. Kind of cute. It's an, it's an inspirational theme, um, and it's been one of the top grossing apps on iPhone for the last year. And I think that's what you have to consider when you choose these themes. Choose a theme that's potentially universal, that has broad and mass appeal, ideally. Uh, that's my perspective, because I'm always trying to develop games that are mass, mass audience. But you know, find a theme that's inspirational or gives gives the players a sense of aspiration or something that they would love to be. You know, they don't necessarily they can't necessarily do it in the real life, but they would love to do it if you know if they could. And so stuff like running your own dragon park that sounds cool. You know, running your own zoo. This is a screenshot of Tap Zoo. This this right here. Um, let me get back there. Okay, um, running your own zoo. That's cool. That's something that they would never necessarily do in real life, but it would be really cool if they could. And so choose, choosing the right theme is critical. It doesn't require any more coding, but you know, choosing the right theme can produce even more success than your normal game. And the reason why I mentioned this theme mechanic is because I was actually helping some students recently. They had um, some apps on the App Store, <coughs> and they were asking me why, why their apps haven't been successful. So I tested them out. One of the games kind of had some game design issues, and that's fine, but the second game was pretty fun, you know, it was all right, but the theme that they chose just wasn't inspirational. It didn't really inspire me to want to keep playing it. And I think what I see often is that students will sometimes choose a theme that's kind of like these traditional space shooter or kind of hardcore themes. And, you know, that's fine, but why not consider, I mean, unless it really violates your values, um, why not consider some of these more inspiring and aspirational themes that's, that's more um, ubiquitous. Uh, for example, dragons, animals. Animals are a powerful theme. Restaurants are a powerful theme. Farming, gardening, these are very powerful themes for a lot of people. And when people are looking for games, you know, they're looking for diversion. So a game where they can kind of run their own garden or run their own little theme park or stuff like that, that's fun. It's the same reason why we may necessarily watch certain movies. You know, I may watch certain superhero movies because, you know, those superheroes kind of inspire me or they give me a diversion from my real day or my everyday life. So that's something to keep in mind. And so we're going to go to appannie.com and check out some of these top apps. So you go to App Annie and let's look at store stats. Okay, and this shows kind of the iPhone app store and the top grossing apps are here on the right side. And look, you look at stuff like Simpsons, which is IP, you know, that's, you know, that's cool, but look at look at Dragon Veil. Dragon Veil has actually been in the top for a while. And you know, it's been on probably in the top grossing for over a year now. It's it's amazing. It's probably grossed over fifty million dollars by being the the top there on iPhone. And look at it. You know, it's it kind of takes that farm, the farm gaming system, you know, that farm sim game systems that you know Farmville made famous. And applies it to dragons and you know because it's kind of a unique theme same gameplay but unique theme you know it has a collection element it becomes uh, something that can be very popular and people enjoy so that's one example I mean you look at some of these other things even like Bejeweled Blitz right it's the match three match three mechanic which is cool but what they did is they chose the theme of jewels you know people are inspired by jewels, jewels are exotic, jewels are something that people desire. And so that jewel theme inspires people and makes it more universal. So 
Um, so that's another thing. Now what I want to do is point out another interesting story, and that is Deer Hunter. And that really drives home the point of the, okay. So Deer Hunter is one of the top grossing. Now, right now it's top grossing on iPhone. This this IP, you know, Deer Hunter concept has been a lot, uh, you know, been out there for a long time. It was actually released on the PC a while back, back when Quake and Doom were really popular. And so when Quake and Doom, which were first person shooters, were really popular, people were rushing to make first person shooters, right? But you know, Quake and Doom, they were really cutting edge. They had the best pixel shaders, the best graphics, and all these other things. And it was going to be really hard to compete with them. But then this one studio, you know, back in the day, they were like, I guess they had a limited budget and they decided to make a first person shooter that was where you would actually take that first person shooter mechanic, but apply it to hunting deer. So it was, they chose a deer hunting theme, right? And that was crazy. Who would buy a deer hunter, deer hunting theme, right? Like that makes no sense. There's Quake, there's Doom, there's all these kind of like... Um, special shooting games and you know team you know all these types of team games and whatever else and so they released deer hunter and walmart and you know it's a low budget low quality graphics you know definitely not the, the cutting edge and guess what it took off it took off it was crazy it actually like i think sold over 20 million dollars worth of goods and they're like what happened and you know what happened was the right theme they didn't necessarily have even the best game mechanics, the most polished, but because they had a theme that resonated with the audience, who, if you shopped at Walmart, they're like, it, it worked. And because maybe the people at Walmart were like, you know, okay, Quake, Doom, those are kind of abstract. What does that mean? Oh, deer hunting. That's cool. You know, that's something that, oh, if I had time in real life, I might do it. Well, I might as well just play this game. It's cool. You know, I don't need a hunting license to play this game. Might as well pick it up. It's 20 bucks or whatever else. So... They pick up Deer Hunter because it's a theme that they can they can relate to that inspires them. That is their aspiration. And so Deer Hunter kept on going and then they released sequels and sequels and it made a lot of money. And I think that just shows the power of theme because that game probably had nothing else going for it. You know, in terms of first person shooters or anything else, uh, you know what? It probably it wouldn't it wouldn't have competed against the best first person shooters at that time. And because it chose a different theme, it was able to develop this kind of unique franchise and now it's on mobile uh, because people are familiar with the brand and the theme now. So that's the power of theme. And so for the students and even indie developers out there, I, I think that's something to keep in mind is what is a theme that's inspirational, that's universal, but hasn't even necessarily been done. I'm not even saying copy or take the themes that are already successful. You can find themes that haven't been done yet on the app store or whatever else and, you know, figure out a twist on them and, and make them work, uh, you know, or apply them to your to your game system. And these themes don't even have to be topics. They don't have to necessarily be about animals or hunting or whatever else. They can even be holiday related or time related. You know, when it's the holiday season or winter time or, you know, winter holidays, you can come up with a theme for that. If it's Halloween, you can come up for a theme for that. If it's Valentine's Day, you can come up with a game that uses that as a theme. So be on the lookout for themes that people like. Um, make a list, you know, for example, unicorns. Unicorns are something that people seem to like a lot. And it hasn't really been done. Well, you know, maybe a unicorn park. We saw that Dragon Veil, vale, Dragon Park. Maybe a unicorn unicorn park can work. But, you know, make a list of themes or ideas <clears throat> that when applied to your game would make it more interesting or compelling or more universal. So that's pretty much it for this, um, you know, hidden game design mechanic talk. It doesn't really involve any, it doesn't involve any coding, but it's just uh, a perspective on how you can, make your game, the game that you already have or that you're working on, more compelling to a lot more players. Once again, these talks are sponsored by chromacoders.org, which is a club to help students make their own games and teams. So enjoy.